it. So um, this $35 computer, uh, it is what they call an SBC, single board computer. This is a full computer. This is a full desktop computer. Uh, but it's, it's $35 for a Raspberry Pi 3. There are several different models, but for this computer, talking about Raspberry Pi 3, talking about $35. And the reason they started doing this is originated out of the UK um, is because they wanted to bring computing to everybody. So this is really a STEM kit for kids. Kids can have their own computer. They wanted to make it affordable so that anybody anywhere in, you know, almost any, you know, um, economic, a range could afford their own computer. And, you know, worst case scenario, especially if you're working with kids, if they mess it all up, uh, worst case scenario, um, instead of a hard drive, they have a, they use a micro S SD card, you know, like for your phone or for your, your, your uh, camera or something like that. Worst case scenario, you reflash the SD card or worst case scenario, you know, you buy another SD card. I probably own about 20 of these SD cards now. Um, and you can have all sorts of different projects, but this is a, there is an operating system um, that you flash onto the micro SD card and pop it in here. It is the Raspberry Pi operating system. Uh, so it's kind of like Windows, quite frankly. Uh, it's uh, there's, but it's for programming. So it comes with um, a couple different programming, you know, coding um, uh, applications on it. And so you can learn how to code uh, for $35 now. What a deal, right? Uh, so a lot of people do this with their kids. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3, uh, retails for $35. And this is the Raspberry Pi 0W. And this retails for $9.99. I mean, how, how much cheaper can we get? So I've got uh, two little demos for you today. They're both hacks, okay? So you could go and off the shelf, go to a store, Micro Center, Amazon, wherever, and you could go buy a... Uh, security camera for your home. So this is really common now, the ring doorbell with the camera, right? There you you mount a camera in your home and it's, uh, raise your hand if you already have this in your home, you probably already do. Um, you know, it's motion sensor. So every time somebody walks in the front door, it sends you an email to your phone or there's an app and, you know, it has recording. A lot of people have this in their garage for when they get Amazon deliveries. You know, now you can have, you know, you can watch as an Amazon guy drops off your box on your porch or, you know, there are more advanced versions where, you know, the garage door opens and they can get in and drop off your stuff and then they leave and the door, garage door closes. So raise your hand if you already have a uh, home monitoring camera of some kind. I see two hands, three hands, four hands. Woohoo! All right. So I don't have this because I didn't want to pay the $5 a month. I'm way too cheap to do that. There is a, there is another way of doing this and you, and I just, I'm too cheap to pay $5 a month. Okay. To do this. So what I've done is I have a right here, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and you can do this on a Raspberry Pi 3. It really doesn't matter. And I've got a webcam. All right. And you can do this with a you know, a, there is something called Raspberry Pi camera. So um, total investment here for the hardware was, you know, I don't know, 35 for the computer and then the, the webcam, you can get one for 40 bucks or something like that. So uh, way, way lower than, than um, the 30, than, uh, you know, than probably, it's probably $60 is what you'd spend. And then uh, over here, I have a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. So what you see in here with a Raspberry Pi camera right here, I spent $5 on $15 on this setup, somewhere like that. I, I, I spent, it was not very expensive for this setup. And there's something called Motion Eye, and then that's one of the links that we sent. And you can do this without actually knowing any code, mostly, I think. Um, and um, I'm gonna do a screen share now, and I'm gonna show you what my screen looks like Hello, and do y'all y'all see that? Hopefully, you see me waving to myself, my screen. Yes, yes. we see you. Okay, yeah. all right. So that is my webcam I just showed you. That's a Raspberry Pi four attached to a webcam. Hi. All right, and then my Raspberry Pi zero. Hello, attached to my webcam. Hopefully, y'all can see that too. That's your sixty dollars versus your uh, fifteen dollar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, those are yeah two different examples. Um, but what the magic is, you can go to Google Drive, you can have the photos and the videos. It is motion triggered, 
Okay, you'll set it up for motion triggering. I can show you how to do that real quick, but you can have it upload automatically to Google Drive. So thus you don't pay the $5 a month for the, the ongoing service. That's $60 a year. I'm, I, I'm not gonna pay that. Not when I can do this uh, for free. And you can also send yourself an email. This is not my real email, y'all. Don't worry, you're not looking at my personal emails. I set up a separate Gmail account for free and I, sent my, and I, I send myself pictures of myself uh, when I'm doing these demos. But yeah, you can have it email you, notify you every time it detects movement and email you the pictures as well. So yeah, you, you can also do Dropbox. So you can do Dropbox or Google Drive or FTP or, you know, there are a couple different options. And actually I can show you that right here. Uh, let's see. So there is, yeah, video device. You can have uh, file storage and you can choose where you want to store it. So you can upload your media files and you have your choice of Dropbox, Google Photo, Google Drive, um, secure FTP or FTP server. Um, and then it, there's motion detection. You can turn it on or off. So the whole point of this is to turn on motion detection and you can even set um, the frame threshold. So you can, it, the default's 2.6, but you can you know, say, okay, only if this much motion happens, do you actually say it is motion? Um, and there's so many different options you can set here. So we're doing all of this without actually knowing how to code. I thought that was interesting. There's, you know, there's this great UI that somebody's made. The software was free. I downloaded it off, you know, off their, it's just open, open source, free software. So all I had to do was buy the equipment. That was, uh, you know, a cost that I had. Um, but then the monthly and getting the software is actually free for this. Um, so yeah, uh, and you can do motion notifications. You can send an email, call a webhook, run a command. Um, and then you can do movies or you can just do cell images and you can say, you know, preserve my pictures for one week um, and the capture mode is uh, motion triggered. Or you can actually even just take a picture of yourself if, you, if you'd like um, at any point. So you can click on your own picture and just smile and then take, and then there's like a little icon that you can take a picture of. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, if, if you wanna do a hack, this is a hack and um, I'm doing it to save money. So I have one in my kitchen and um, and it and as people have a fire in my um, little condo that I live in a while ago, and um, and and so yeah, I I didn't have this at the time, but if I had this, then I would have seen you know the firemen come through. I did get my credit card stolen in that um, in that scenario, and I wish I had this on at the time, so I would have captured the guy who stole my credit card. Uh, who had walked into my house at, pretending to be in the emergency services during that fire. Any, any questions, comments? I've just like woo, talked a lot. I mean, it's really cool. It's, um, I guess for non-techies, it's, uh, you know, just the look of it, right, is just scary. You see the green board and you see chips and little things sticking out of it and you say okay that's for other people <laughs> that's not for like you know me and you Ray, see there are very nice cases you just put the damn thing in and uh, very kid friendly the kids love to see the exciting exposed uh, material but there are uh there are cases in fact if i if we were in class i'd show you my Raspberry Pi 3, which has a plexiglass, really nice. The case costs $50. The computer costs $35. <clears throat> so uh, don't let that intimidate you. They, they can go in a case. <laughs> OK. Plug and play. It looks plug and play. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Come on, I want you to, I, I want you to think about doing this yourself or uh, have your kids uh, get into this because they, they would love this as well. I have a question, Ben. Um, I'm not very IT savvy, but how are you connected to the internet? Is it Wi-Fi or? Yeah, yes, it's Wi-Fi. And yes, that is something you have to, um, that's in the tutorial that um, Dr. Ben sent out. So yeah, it, it's, um, you do need to know your Wi-Fi um, uh, login and password. But that's it. 
I mean, you have Bluetooth, you have Wi-Fi, and you can even have the Ethernet cable in. So there are many ways you could connect to the internet. With, with, oh, yeah, right. And so there is, she's got four USB and one Ethernet, right? Yes, yeah. And then a, um, on this side, internet. on this side is HDMI, your... like, you know, like your yeah. TV. It's HDMI on this side, and you've got a 3.5 millimeter jack for your um, audio out. And then this is the power right here. And this is um, a micro USB. This is the same power as if you had an Android phone. You could, you could just use that to power your, your Pi. And, and you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yes, uh, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on top of that. So yeah, for awesome. $35. $35. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is super awesome, Caroline. I'm gonna <clears throat> try this. I just subscribed to your YouTube channel as well. So, and I just saw you have so many videos there. My question is, how do you think of designing, you know, um, as, as you think about, okay, this, this is a nice hack, but I'm just saying, like when you think of an IoT application, let's say for work or commercial use, what will be the process that you go through in terms of applying a sensor and an IoT to a use case and matching the needs with uh, technology? What, what is your process that you go through? Um, first of all, number one, thank you for subscribing to my channel on YouTube. Uh, and so the problem with what I was doing was it was a hobby. Okay. And it was a hobby I was publishing on Tom's hardware and it was a, it was a hobby I was doing on uh, YouTube. So I really wasn't, I wasn't, you know, making a whole bunch of these. I have a second demo I'll show you here. This is a temperature and humidity sensor in a second. It's also a hack as well. Um, so the reason I'm going over to Wasiga now is because they're innovating and they're going to do this kind of uh, product development and be able to scale. That's the biggest thing is um, how many, how many of these can I scale this this probably doesn't scale well at, even at $35 so you're probably you know trying to figure out oh is there an, a cheaper way of doing this and you start looking at these um, these Raspberry Pi zero W's as well so you know you got to look at scale you got to look at what you know the business case the use case is there you know is this actually the cheapest and most reliable way of doing something versus something else I I could get this more technical And, and also funding. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Also need five million dollars in funding, as as uh, as we talked about last hour. Yeah, right. yeah, of course. I I think Prasad, the uh, as you look at think about it, these are fine for prototypes and and demonstration, and frankly, you can do amazing prototypes and demonstrations by this for industrial setting structures. But um, the scaling out is fair is a lot easier once the you're you're validating the hardware and software complement uh, in general via these uh, these tools, and that's how I say how do toys become tools and like yeah yeah Caroline is that bridge <laughs> and I oh, and, and another really common <laughs> thing. Um, in mm. prototyping for businesses is, yeah, you, you, you developed on a Raspberry Pi, you, you know, you've got one working. The other part of it is they like nice cases, you know, as, as uh, Ben pointed out. And a lot of us hobbyists uh, with a Raspberry Pi, we also have 3D printers. And so I've gotten really into 3D printing and um, yeah, and we print cases or we'll print, you know, like if you have like a screen display, I've printed like a box that has both the Raspberry Pi and the screen display in it. And that's what you would show a potential investor is, hey, let me 3D print, you know, what a prototype would look like. A, there, a lot of these investors are looking for, you know, full prototypes with the, with the case, the, with the screen and everything as well. And so if you have a 3D printer, um, and, and believe it or not, Wasika has two 3D printers and they're 3D printing like speakers right now to, to test out, you know, the sound because they're making um, speakers at intercoms as part of their business too. So there is a 3D right. printing too. Right, right. Um, so let me do my, my second, um, my second uh, uh, little, little demo here, another hack here um, mm. to introduce a microcontroller. Uh, for from Raspberry Pi. So we talked about Raspberry Pi that is, you know, a single board computer that has a full operating system on it. Um, so 
uh, recently they wanted to get into the microcontroller business, uh, which is um, this little guy right here, this tiny where my finger is, this little guy right here is a microcontroller. Basically, the difference is there's no operating system on a microcontroller. What they do is um, it's you write the code. This is this is coding, y'all. Okay, this is I would say this is not for if you're just not technical. Um, you write the code in C, C plus plus, and you compile it. Then you've got to save. You got to get the code on here somehow, and then it always executes the code uh, continuously. Uh, but the joy is you can power this Pico from a uh, power bank, like for your phone. This is something I got for my phone. And now I am powering my entire Pico uh, microcontroller and the system here. And this white little white thing here, this is a temperature and humidity sensor. And then I've got this little display here. I did not 3D print a beautiful case, but if I was doing this for Tom Hardware, I probably would have to print a 3D case for this. And uh, on the screen, hopefully you can see it. Uh, the, it's kind of hard. Um, is that you can see the current temperature and the current humidity in my room in my office yeah. right now, as yeah. I um, as as it is. And then yeah, so if you if you hold down the temperature and humidity sensor here, the the temperature and the humidity will eventually go up. I think it, it refreshes, I think every two seconds is what I said it for. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is more of an IOT uh, play, right? So you've got the microcontroller, you've got a sensor and you've got an output. So, you know, in a prototype situation, yeah, this is great. This is something you would show off and say, okay, what can we do with this? I can make an app for this. I can, you know, uh, put this, you know, we can Wi-Fi this out. We can, you know, we can alert, you know, that you can sound an alarm um, when the temperature gets too hot, you know, hey, my place is on fire, you know, so there's so many different opportunities with this. And, um, and this was just a little, you know, just a little project I did hack. It is a hack. This is not, I'm, I can't sell this to anybody, y'all. This is just to show uh, how um, microcontrollers work. Now, uh, was the software uh you have Python, what languages or what software environments would you have? What did you do this one in? Oh yeah, that's a great question. I did this in C, C++, uh, which oh. I'm not familiar with at all. So, uh, but basically, yeah, you have to use like a Visual Studio, Visual Basic. This, this was not for newbies. This was, I had to um, download an SDK and then compile it and then build it. I had to do a C make and then a make. So this was a lot of terminal commands. And then I had to um, uh, compile the file and then get it on this uh, little microcontroller. The, there is an easier method, uh, which I felt like it, it was more basic. You know, you could control a few LEDs. I couldn't figure out how to do the temperature emitted sensor with this thing. Um, the, there's an easier method. It's called MicroPython. So it is very Python based and you can, you can plug in this directly into a Windows machine, a Mac or a Raspberry Pi and then program it using MicroPython. Um, actually, Thony, I think, if, I don't know if y'all have heard of Thony, but Thony is one of the software packages that comes automatically with a Raspberry Pi operating system, and you can just code um, almost directly onto it uh, with Python without having to make and, and run a bunch of terminal commands. Uh, but it was kind of limited as to the functionality uh, with MicroPython. But yeah, you, if you want to get started and you know Python, uh, that is an option if you want to do the Pico. And then I saw some uh, other hacks where they, they can hook up to IFTTT. Um, oh yeah, IFTTT. If you don't want to do stuff in, with IFTTT. Yeah, that's the, generally, yeah, there's a lot of stuff where somebody's already built that applet for you and you just take advantage of that. And it, yeah, if you're not a coder, yeah, I've, I've done stuff on IFTT, not building the applet, but using somebody else's applet. Yeah, yeah. And they, Caroline, they have done that. They have uh, oh, okay. yeah. played with IFTT too. <clears throat> and, and also um, Ben wanted me to mention uh, as part of this Pico thing, which I don't get this about Raspberry Pi at all, is that this Pico thing didn't come let you, so I don't know if y'all can see, this is, this is a breadboard that is on. Um, it didn't come with the pin, there's these pins that hold my Pico into the breadboard. 
it did not come with the pins already soldered on. I had to get out a soldering iron, which is 230 degrees Celsius and solder on 40 pins in order to get this going. Um, I, and right now they're not selling a Pico with the pre-soldered headers. And I don't know how many people have soldering irons out there. I did not have a soldering iron when I started <laughs> working with Raspberry Pis. So, uh, and, and this is, I wouldn't, I would say this is not for kids. I, uh, I would not let my child hold a 230 degrees Celsius um, soldering iron and try to do this. Um, but, you know, I don't know that, that, that you, that's a decision you can make on your own. But I, I thought that was kind of advanced as well, too. It yeah, really is impressive. Good. Go ahead. Sorry, Ben. Um, no, no. I was just I, I had an impression that uh, it's just impressive how the the sensor technology has advanced so much because I remember doing a, I think, microprocessors class, giant board, the C++ coding in school, but without the sensors, you had to do all the language and, and um, logic yourself. So now it's easier to just kind of plug and play some of that, that um, features, which I think that's awesome. Yeah, there's a library, there's almost a library for every single sensor out there, and there's a sample code. and. Yeah, coding has changed a lot since I was at Georgia Tech. I mean, when I was at Georgia Tech, I wrote everything by hand, every line by hand. Now it's you draw on the internet and find some samples here and there and you piece it all together for your project. You want to describe GitHub uh, just for a minute? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, so GitHub is a repository for code and I've got 30 repositories now on GitHub. So check me out on GitHub. I'm Caroline Dunn on GitHub. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's not just, it's so easy to uh, push your code onto GitHub for people and to download. And then it's also easy to look at other people's code on GitHub as well. So yeah, it's, it's this huge repository, for amazing. I mean, just that's really where you go and get raw code from. Now, uh, who's it? Facebook who, or Microsoft picked up GitHub? I'm, I'm trying to remember who bought them. Yeah, recently. yeah. Microsoft. Microsoft did. Microsoft. I'm wondering, yeah. uh, I get nervous about it because I, I, how does, I want GitHub to stay GitHub. Oh, I was, I am not, wow, I'm not keeping up with the times now. I did not know. This is, this is about the same time they were buying LinkedIn and they bought GitHub as well. So it's been, it's been a. Uh, they bought LinkedIn a long time ago. Yeah. Well, so but far. GitHub, the kept... branding on GitHub is still GitHub. Right. It is. And um, uh, it's only recently that they're starting to talk about patterns of integration. Um, and that that makes a risk, just as, you know, given what happened to Facebook and several others. But in any case, the uh, you have a project, uh, Caroline. One of your projects was uh, one that I always like folks to work on: our magic mirrors. And uh, you did a magic mirror, didn't you? Um, I did a long time ago on my YouTube channel. I did a five-part series on magic mirror. Uh, without the mirror because I, I don't have you know all the fancy stuff to do yeah. it so it was just a I made it into a photo frame like you know like you can go <laughs> this is another hack because I was like I could buy a, a digital photo frame that you know scrolls through all my pictures or I could make one with all the stuff I have at home with my raspberry pi <laughs> And so I did this five part series and it was like my picture, you know, scrolled through and then I could have the date and the weather and my and my calendar on here. And then the fifth part was I can control it from my phone uh, and and but it's a little bit out of date. So what I've done is I have um, I wrote it up for Tom's hardware, the update version. And I just finished that actually like last month or something like that. So I can give you um, but this is it's not the five part version, it's actually just a one part version. And I'm gonna do this, put this in the chat field here. Um, and it is the latest updated how to do magic mirror as a digital photo frame. Yeah, and, and um, so if you want a project, I wanna do a project like a magic mirror or something like that and go to GitHub, you'll find uh, a wealth of projects and many of the assets, the software assets, instructions. It, it's a wonderful sandbox for, uh, for noobs 
uh, for your kids and noobs to uh, go in and pick up projects that you can do for quite handily yourself. Yeah, so if you want to do magic mirror, there's actually a magic mirror link that I'm going to put in the chat field here um, that has the magic mirror. And yeah, it is the, the back end code is all on GitHub to your point. And the magic of magic mirror is that there are all these modules. So you can choose, pick and choose what you want your magic mirror to do. And um, those are, so, so you go through the modules and um, those are all hosted on GitHub as well. Carolyn, uh, and, and maybe for Ben as well, are you playing around with AR, VR at all? Um, oh, that's a great question. Not on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, it doesn't quite have the processing power. Um, so I taught the, the uh, Spark AR class for, there is a Facebook developers group here in Atlanta. If you're interested in joining, you just go on Facebook, search Facebook developers of Atlanta and I offered a free class on Spark AR, um, which is the AR for um, for Facebook, and you know how to make your first um, little thing, um, first AR thing, which is basically your face, and you can put like a bunny ears on it or something like that. What I was doing with it is finding low. Um, promoting my businesses, my clients, and having like a hat with their logo on their hat for branding purposes. Um, and that is on my, if you really work really hard, you can search my YouTube channel for Spark AR. And I have three tutorials on Spark AR on my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, but there's brilliant. so many great resources here in Atlanta, uh, meetup groups that you can join XR Atlanta for the virtual reality part as well. Very cool. Ray, there's an idea for you, an AR-based uh, chef assistant. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. We're Thank we're you. going to uh, we're we're going to have a session on on AR, VR, and and virtual world and uh, full immersion technologies uh, in a couple of classes from now, and uh, we'll we'll get back into that because it's a certainly growing activities on on all dimensions. Other uh, other questions comments. Uh, I wanted I wanted to have Caroline come and shame you so that you will um, go out and develop one of these uh, projects yourself. I mean, I'm, I've got it up on I've got it on Amazon right now, looking at it because I have a a son who just had his uh, had a birthday and he's at uh, he's in studying mechanical engineering and uh, he's supposed to graduate in December, so. I'm looking at this thing thinking he might make heads or tails of it, I guess. Out of which, which thing? Uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Oh, the 4? Yeah. Is, that, is there a difference? Is, I know you talked about the 3. I notice on uh, it's for sale as the, I guess the latest version is 4. Yeah, yes. the latest version is 4. Um, and those are just a little bit more expensive because you can buy them with 2 gigs of memory or 4 gigs of memory or even, I think there's one for 8 gigs that I bought one day for 75. I mean, I really shelled it out at $75. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ray, I got Ray, Ray okay, they I, are... I, I'm on a budget here, y'all. <laughs> Ray, they're pretty... <laughs> like, I'm going to save money, you know? I'm going to spend hours doing something, I, you know, but I'm going to save 5 bucks. Yeah. Right, right. I learned in convenience stores that people will drive, will make a U-turn and drive way out of the way to save one penny on a gallon of gas. So it doesn't shock me. <laughs> right? Well, Ray, I, I, Raspberry Pi 3 is, is great for your son to get started with. And, and, and the 4 is, an, is, as Caroline says, is an, is an upgrade. They, but from a standpoint of uh, throw and go, uh, the three is, is fantastic. Absolutely. <clears throat> Any other questions? I, I hope for you guys to get in, inspired to give some thought to these things are not unattainable. The libraries of the software and coding stuff is, is uh, not that onerous. And um, <clears throat> for the most part, uh, you can pick up libraries from GitHub and 
and others that really help bootstrap you in, into these areas. Uh, the kids love it as they get into robotics, especially. And uh, I, I think we'll, we'll talk more about that and we're going to look at other immersive environments as well uh, going forward. Uh, any, any last questions for Caroline or any, any last comments from you, Caroline? Thank you for having me. It's been, it's been fun and, and I'll, I'm available anytime. Thank well, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much for, you're not running today. No, I already did it. I got up at 6 a.m. I ran three and a half miles this morning and then I showered and, you know, put on makeup. Oh, that's, that's just like the rest of these guys here. <laughs> yeah. Pilates <laughs> at, at 5.30. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much, Caroline. Very much appreciate it. And um, uh, you, you have an amazing energy and I know you're going to do great. I hope your contractual arrangement has, uh, has an equity piece in it because I do think um, uh, <clears throat> those guys could do very well. I would, I, I, uh, final comment from myself, which I didn't bring, get to bring to the table at, at that uh, in the discussion, I would be reskinning the interface. It's, uh, it, the interface is very, very Georgia Tech y. <laughs> and uh, and no if red. I were to, you notice uh, that there's no red in the interface whatsoever. <laughs> just like, we have, we have the desk code, a, no red shirt at work. <laughs> I would create an imaging of a, of school and have school metaphors and school skeuomorphs <laughs> that I would put into into place, and I would allow people to paint their school. I would set up alarms based on events. the The interface right now deals with create an event, do ring this alarm, and it, the protocol is very geeky, and it doesn't. <laughs> The scripting could be very much a graphical script that I could uh, drag and drop. Yeah, it, yeah, we should be dragging right. and dropping. We should be, you know, yeah, the GUI interface. I mean, you saw what I did it in on the screen with the motion eye, and that was free. I mean, yes. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, yeah. I think I think that's something they could really I I would really do before I go out big to the market, and that's why I asked about the scripting language. Uh, in as the interface, what I found in many systems going out, what people will tend to do is they will set up the default and never change it. <clears throat> and yes. uh, uh, we've seen this over and over and all of you have seen this in your systems. So they have this very capable system and they set it up, uh, employ the defaults. And because it's hard to change it, they never change it. And uh, I want on a daily basis to be able to change special protocols in the school uh, according to my culture in, the, in that school or the school system. And it, it should be a very graphic interface. They really, it's too very uh, Georgia techy. <laughs> Well, you don't want me designing the interface. <laughs> I just all I'm gonna do is, yeah, yeah. Blue's a great color. Yellow's a great color. Yes, white's a great color. <laughs> I, I just think that they they uh, that that could be an interface. Anybody else have any last minute thoughts or comments on uh, uh, Wasega going forward? It, it's a much better platform than uh, my first exposure. Uh, to it, which I thought was almost centrally focused around the shooter thing. And I got that impression and you're not gonna sell wholly on that. You're gonna get interest on it, but you're not gonna sell wholly on that. <clears throat> and, uh, and it is a, a very rich environment. It's, a, it's in a day-to-day -day administrative tool and control. And I would be dash, set up dashboards for different roles in the school and roles in the district so that my, my school is visible to in different contexts to uh, different um, parts of the district. Other than that, I have no opinion. 
Hey, I'm three days in. They've been doing this for four years. They, they've learned a few things. And um, yeah, and it's, it's amazing what they've accomplished in such a short amount of time. So uh, yeah, it's only, it's only going to get better from here. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. So, but thank you, everybody. Y'all have been awesome. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Right, thank you. Thanks. All right. I'm leaving. Y'all can finish your stuff. Bye. Bye. <laughs>